everybody. Welcome to Starting Line Church. We are so glad that you have joined us today as we continue our series called Organic. That's going to lead us all the way up to Easter Sunday, which is not that far away, which is crazy. As we were praying over this Easter season and asking God, how do we best prepare for this time? We believe that he wants to equip us on how to share the message of Jesus during this Easter season. Because I think a lot of us, we want to share our faith. We want to talk about Jesus, but we don't want it to feel awkward or uncomfortable or pushy or unnatural for them or for us. And so this series is meant to discover the ordinary ways in which we can communicate the gospel in our everyday lives and relationships. Because we want it to be something that feels natural and joyful and not forceful and scary. Last week, we began our series by talking about evangelism, and it's defined as organic outreach for ordinary people. It's simply outreach for ordinary people. It's sharing God's love and talking about the good news of Jesus. We're all called to evangelize in natural ways, and we all can do this as followers of Jesus. So we introduce this idea, then for the next three weeks, we're going to talk about three different steps that are important in this evangelism process that we're called to. And today we get to talk about the first one that has to do with preparation. Have you ever had to prepare for something? Regardless of if it's something good or something bad, when you prepare, you're getting ready for something that's coming in the future. You prepare for a test by studying for it. You prepare for people coming to your house by cleaning it and putting the junk away. You prepare for cooking a meal by buying all the ingredients and preparing the the food in ahead of time. You prepare for a game by scouting the other team and practicing and putting the game plan in. Preparing is making ready beforehand. It's what you do in advance. So today we're going to dive into this first step of evangelism that involves preparation. And this step number one is preparing the soil. Now I am not at all a gardener. I do not have a green thumb. Unfortunately, I am a plant killer. But Zach, my husband, likes to garden, and I have learned some things from him along the way that in order for a garden to grow and bear fruit and bear crop in the future, you have to prepare the soil ahead of time. This preparation that goes into the garden growing process, and I'm told that it goes on for a long time before you plant seeds, and then depending on what you planted, those seeds take a long time to grow. So to prepare the soil, you uncover the garden, you let it breathe, you till the soil, you mulch it, you loosen it, you add organic matter to improve the soil's health, you get rid of the weeds and the debris and anything that might break up the soil structure and hurt the seeds for growth. Preparing the soil is a very important step because it readies the soil for effective health, healthy growth to take place. Why in the world are we talking about this today? Because when it comes to evangelism, sharing the message of Jesus in our lives, there's the same kind of step that takes place. There are things that we need to do in preparation in our own lives when it comes to wanting to do organic outreach. We can't just head into a situation and wing it. There's an important step of prep work that needs to be done beforehand, behind the scenes, and done in our own hearts. That, the work that starts with us. Now, this preparation isn't memorizing the Bible or preparing a speech that we can say verbatim with every person we get it so we get it perfect. It's about the work that needs to be done in us because when we're doing something as important about ta- as about talking about Jesus with those who don't know him, we need to make sure that we have the right heart and the right attitude and the right spirit in that process. So how do we prepare for evangelism? How do we prepare the soil? We prepare by living a life of love. Live a life of love. It seems so simple, doesn't it? Yet, it can be incredibly difficult for us to do. Because the truth is, a huge part of preparing the soil to tell people about Jesus is having a heart that is so deeply in love with God and in love with people. We have to prepare by living a life of love in all that we do because the message of Jesus that we're sharing is all about love. 
So if we want to communicate the love of Jesus, we have to live a life that reflects the love of Jesus. Like we said last week, this series is based on a book um, called Organic Outreach for Ordinary People. And in this book, the author tells a story about a guy who really wanted his neighbor to come to know Jesus. But he told the author that he didn't really like his neighbor and he didn't really like being around him. And so as the author kept listening to this man go on and on about this, he finally stopped him and he told him that it was great that he wanted his friend to find Jesus. That was a great start, but he boldly suggested that he should let somebody else try to reach him instead. Seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? Why would he say that? He went on to explain to this man that if wanting him to know Jesus was nothing more than religious homework, his neighbor would soon sense his lack of sincerity. If he didn't actually love his neighbor and care about him and earn the right to talk about Jesus with him, then none of it was going to work. Because when we're motivated by guilt or a sense of religious obligation or when people become our projects to make us feel superior, we have problems because that's not authentic and it's not real and it doesn't come out of a place of love. It might not come out of a place of hate, but it doesn't come out of a place of growing love. And plain and simple, it's just not how Jesus did ministry on earth. So even though the intention is good, the process is not. We aren't called to have the conversation with unbelievers as a project or to check it off our list of religious duties. It's not a system or a program or a presentation or a strategy that everyone needs to get on board with. The motivation and the reason behind us wanting people to come to know Jesus should be out of a deep and genuine love for them because you want them to experience the love of Jesus that you have experienced. You have something better. You have something more. And it's about being transformed by the love of God, the love that God has showed us and then authentically loving others as a result of God's love. Today, I want us to go to Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus is talking with the religious leaders of the day. And he, they didn't like Jesus. They did not like Jesus because he, his life of love confused them because he loved, Jesus loved a bunch of people that they didn't and they thought they shouldn't. And so what these guys would do with Jesus is that they would ask him all these questions that, to get him to say the wrong thing and confuse him and to get him in trouble and it never worked. And so they would also categorize the different laws that they were following into like a hierarchy based on what they thought was the most important and what they thought didn't really matter. So at this moment, Jesus, they ask him like, what do you think the most important commandment is? Making him pick one. And this is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 37. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So Jesus tells these guys that if we truly love God, if we truly love our neighbors, then we will naturally keep all the commandments that God has given us. If we genuinely love people and love our creator, things, those, those things are just going to happen naturally because it goes together. If we love our neighbor, you aren't going to steal from them. So rather than worrying about all the things that we're not allowed to do and placing them into this hierarchy of which is more important, Jesus is looking at them and saying at them, hey, like, love God, love people. Love God, love people. And if you do that, then you should be doing what God is asking of you. As Jesus followers, we are called to be people of love who walk in love, speak in love, act in love, and do everything with an attitude of love, even when we disagree with them, even when we don't like them. The entire gospel, the good news of Jesus, is founded upon love. So if we want to earn the right to talk about people, talk to people about Jesus, then we first have to live in love towards them because it is not at all effective to reach people or Jesus with words when we truly don't love them with our thoughts and our actions. 
So the preparation in our own hearts is first asking ourselves questions like, do I really love this person? And if I don't, how can I get there? Do I want to get to know this person? Do I want to spend time with this person? Is my soul drenched in the grace of God that I want to show the love and grace of Christ with this person? And whether the answer is yes or no to those questions, we're still human and we need to grow in this area of living in love. So how do we do that? How do we do that? I think there are three things that I want to uh, talk about and end our time with today as ways that we can, we can grow in this. Number one, study the life of Jesus. Study the life of Jesus. Open your Bible, walk through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and study the life of Jesus. What did Jesus do? How did he act? How did he treat people? Who did he spend his time with? Many of the stories we read about Jesus' life on earth um, have him, you know, he's being present with people. He's with people. Every time we look, he's always with people and doing life with people. He connected on a deep level with his 12 disciples. And yes, he preached to large crowds of people that didn't know. But most of the time was spent in small interactions with people who were far from God. We, we read so many stories in the Bible about Jesus spending his time with, with dishonest tax collectors and businessmen, the, the prostitutes, the outcasts, the people that nobody trusted. He ate and he dined around tables with members of society who were label, labeled sinners and that nobody liked. And instead of viewing himself better than them because he was God or looking down on them for their sin and their choices because of his own perfection, he saw them And he deeply loved them and he was present with them. And out of that love, he showed them that there was more to life with him. Study the life of Jesus. Number two, observe people who don't know Jesus. Just observe them. Just watch them. Sometimes we don't have to, we we need to observe them before we say anything. How do they act? How do they talk? How do they look at themselves? How do they view others? How do they view the world around them? In order to reach people, we have to put ourselves in their shoes. We have to view life as they do. And we have to listen to their story. Then we have to listen to their doubts. And we have to listen to their thoughts. We have to get on their level and look through the lens that they look through. Not because we view life the same way, but because it gives us a glimpse into their heart. It gives us a glimpse into what makes them think and what makes them tick. It builds relationships and trust with them to show them that we care about them as a person. Jesus noticed people who others didn't notice. And he watched them and he observed. And after he noticed them, he made space for them. Because he knew that in order to reach them, he had to at least attempt to understand them. Because he knew that in order to reach them, we can't truly love someone deeply without knowing them. And if we don't know them or love them, we we surely can't effectively show them who Jesus is. Observe people who don't know Jesus. Number three, Pray we show love, grace, and forgiveness. Be a person of prayer for these things for you. When there is love and grace and forgiveness between people, it's very obvious. Like we see it. You can feel it. You can sense it because those things are so powerful in relationships. They have the power to change and transform many interactions when those things are genuinely present. So our prayer for ourselves as followers of Jesus should be that we walk in love, that we walk in forgiveness, that we walk in grace that he has shown us because those things can only come out of us through Holy Spirit. And so our prayer is that as the grace of God impacts our heart, radical and authentic love would flow out of us that when we feel hurt, we could quickly forgive those who do not deserve it to reveal the presence of God. Our prayer is that God would give us a heart like his. We have to pray for those things. As we prepare the soil of our hearts for the work of outreach, it's critical that love rules the day. Before we speak a word 
about Jesus with others, we have to make sure love is present and we're living it with people because love is the foundation of the gospel story. Love brought God from heaven to earth. Love put Jesus on the cross and allowed nails to be driven in his hands and feet. Love offered salvation to you and to me and love will drive us to our knees in prayer for those searching for more in all things other than Jesus himself. When we love God and our hearts are captivated by his love, we are compelled to reach those who are far from Jesus. But it starts with love. Let's be people of love. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your love, that your love is the foundation of the gospel story and the message of you. You've done all that you've done for us because of your love for us. That has no strings attached. We thank you for that love. We pray that you would give us the courage and the clarity and the strength to be people of love in our lives. That we wouldn't be impacted by the world around us so much that we can't love and show grace and show forgiveness and and be people of love. In order to reach people for Jesus, we have to love them first. So give us that, give us that clarity, give us that courage, give us the strength to do those things. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, One thing before we go, one of the ways that we worship here at Saturday Night is through the act of giving. We give our time, our money, our resources to give back to God what he's blessed us with, that we can keep doing ministry and keep doing these things that he's called us to. So if you want to do that, there are easy ways for you to do that. I can't believe that we're coming down the home stretch of March and we're heading into April. Um, So don't forget to put our Easter gatherings on your calendar um, Friday and Sunday of Easter weekend. We're really excited to gather and remember um, just those events that took place um, before Jesus' resurrection and then to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. So join us for that. Otherwise, we'll see you next week as we continue our series, Organic.